Lecture 24, The More Circle for Finite Strain In this lecture, we will look in more detail at the More Circle for Finite Strain in the deformed configuration and explain its application using an example. First, we need to define a convention for the angular shear. The figure to the left shows a circle of unit radius and a red line within the circle before deformation. The green line is the tangent to the circle and also the perpendicular to the red line. The figure to the right shows the ellipse after deformation. The green line, or tangent to the ellipse, is not any more perpendicular to the red line, but it has rotated anticlockwise an amount psi. Our first convention is that anticlockwise angular shear is positive. Therefore, the angular shear and shear strain are positive in the first and third quadrants of the ellipse, and they are negative in the second and fourth quadrants. A second convention is that in the Mohr circle, positive values of angular shear and shear strain will plot below the horizontal axis and negative values above the horizontal axis. This facilitates comparing the strain ellipse and the Mohr circle. For example, a line in the third quadrant of the strain ellipse making an angle phi prime from S1 will make an angle 2 times phi prime from lambda prime 1 in the Mohr circle. Since this line is in the third quadrant of the strain ellipse, it experienced positive angular shear, and therefore it will plot below the horizontal axis in the Mohr circle. The strain ellipse and the Mohr circle can even more closely related with the help of a special point on the circle, called the pole or origin of lines. Figure A shows a strain ellipse. Figure B shows the Mohr circle for this deformation. To find the pole of the Mohr circle, from lambda prime 1 trace a line parallel to S1 in the strain ellipse. Then from lambda prime 3 trace a line parallel to S3 in the strain ellipse. These two lines will intersect at the pole OL. From OL, a line of any orientation will intersect the other side of the circle at a point P prime that represents the strain of the line. Figure C shows the strain ellipse centered at the pole. We can see how the pole relates the strain ellipse and the Mohr circle. These are two special cases. In figure A, the long axis of the ellipse is vertical, and the short axis is horizontal. The pole is at lambda prime 1. In figure B, the long axis of the ellipse is horizontal, and the short axis is vertical. The pole is at lambda prime 3. Now let's look at an example that is similar to the card deck experiment you did in the lab. The equilateral triangle to the left is the undeformed geometry, and the triangle to the right is the geometry after simple shear. The bisectors A, B, and C are originally 7 meters in length. Their lengths after deformation are given. We need to construct the Mohr circle for this deformation, determine the strain ellipse, maximum shear strain, and lines of no finite elongation, and draw these on the deformed triangle. Let's start by measuring the angular shear of the lines. Line A has positive angular shear of 40 degrees, since it's perpendicular rotated anticlockwise. Line B has negative angular shear of 7 degrees, since it's perpendicular rotated clockwise. And line C has negative angular shear of 35 degrees, since it's perpendicular rotated clockwise. We can now determine the quadratic elongation, lambda, inverse of the quadratic elongation, lambda prime, and gamma prime, which is the shear strain over lambda, for the three lines. Recall that the quadratic elongation is the square of the stretch, and the shear strain is the tangent of the angular shear. We can then plot lines A, B, and C in the Mohr circle diagram using their lambda prime and gamma prime coordinates. Remember that positive shear strain and gamma prime plots below the horizontal axis. We can trace perpendicular bisectors to the lines AB and AC. These will intersect at the center of the Mohr circle. We can now trace the Mohr circle. The lines A, B, and C will of course be on the Mohr circle. From the Mohr circle, we can read lambda prime 1 and lambda prime 3, and compute S1 and S3. S1 is equal to 1.5, and S3 is equal to 0 
Notice that S1 times S3 is equal to 1. Why is that the case? Now, from the lines A, B, and C, we can trace lines parallel to them. These lines will intersect at the pole of the Mohr circle OL. From the pole, we can determine the orientations of S1 and S3 by tracing lines from the pole to lambda prime 1 and lambda prime 3, respectively. Likewise, from the pole we can trace lines to the points of tangency of lines from the origin with the circle. These lines from the pole are the direction of maximum angular shear and shear strain. Then, we can trace lines from the pole to points on the Mohr circle with lambda prime equal to 1. These lines from the pole are the lines of no finite elongation. To make things more clear, we can draw the strain ellipse centered at the pole. Recall that S1 is 1.5, and S3 is 0.67. Finally, we can transfer the strain ellipse to the deformed triangle. Note that one of the lines of no finite elongation is horizontal. This makes sense, since for simple shear, lines parallel to the shear zone boundaries do not change in length during deformation. That's it. Please read these sections from Reagan and answer this question.